yes or no there? I gave you the countdown. <laughs> okay, so this is the q and I promised you all, and there was a lot of questions, the same questions, over and over again. So I picked, I did about two pages, so I picked as many as I could because I didn't want the video to be that long. And if I didn't answer your question in this video, I'm really sorry. And maybe the next one. <laughs> okay, so the first one is how did you get your start in racing? And I feel like I answer this question a lot, especially in interviews, but it's kind of weird how I got started in racing. I grew up around a racing family, but we raced snowmobiles and my dad and all his brothers did. They, they raced a lot of other things too, but the main thing was snowmobiles and my dad owned a racetrack. He just recently sold it, but he owned a racetrack in the town I grew up in. So I kind of grew up around that and around the racing world, but nothing like car racing or NASCAR or anything like that. And I really got my interest in it all by myself. And I asked my dad if he would get me into racing because I loved it, watching it on TV with him every Sunday. So that's kind of, I started in go-karts though. Um, but that's kind of like how I got the interest in it. So I started in go-karts when I was nine, and then I just slowly worked my way up through short track racing, like local nights through the, the whole Midwest, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan. That's usually the main states I have racing. And then now I'm here, I did the Arca Series last year, and now we're gonna be doing the Truck Series. Okay, so that's the first question. If you weren't racing, what would you be doing? So that's a really tough question because I feel like there's so many things I would want to do. Um, and a lot of them are like really wild. Like I always wanted to be a doctor when I was really young. Um, when I'd go to the doctor's office like with my mom a lot, she'd always take me and I would tell her that I want to be like a doctor or something just because I was always around them. Um, but then once I got older, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. My math teacher was one, and he flew off aircraft carriers, and I just thought that was so amazing. He was also a hockey coach, and I played hockey, and I already had a love for it. So then, once I was in his math class and saw all the pictures and heard stories, I was like, ooh, wow, if I didn't race cars, I think I would do that. Okay, growing up in Eagle River has helped you how? So I grew up in a really small, 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 small town and a really small school, but I really think it helped me because the school I went to, they were, they were really, really good with my racing and they had other professional athletes that were going to like the Olympics and stuff like that and snowmobile racers and motocross racers. So they already kind of knew like the whole lifestyle of not being around and traveling a lot. So they had a system in place where I could take my classes online and then come back to school when I was home and be in the classroom and not miss anything and not be behind. So it was really nice and I feel like having them there and like just those teachers that I had, they taught me so much and they were so supportive. And then another thing was my hockey team. I think that I was very lucky to be a part of that hockey team because of the coach we had, he was a cop and um, he was recent, a new coach as soon as I got into high school. I don't think he's a coach there anymore, but he might be. Um, he taught me so much about teamwork and sports and just the outside world. And I was already like growing up so fast because I was racing against grown men at the age of 12 and like around that atmosphere where it was so cool to have a coach like that and to teach me even more and to help me along the way other than hockey. So I feel like I was just really like fortunate to have those people that I grew up around in Eagle River. How did you meet Derek? Okay, there's a lot of questions about Derek. So I only picked two of them. <laughs> so how did I meet Derek? Well, I was 14 years old and I went to Elko Speedway. That was his home track. And I think he was really old. We were like 18, right? Well, I didn't really, I like saw him like in line getting ready to like sign in and he had a hockey hat on so like it caught my attention because no like there's not a lot of race car drivers slash hockey players but I guess we were in Minnesota so that makes sense but I raced against his dad I was racing a limited late so then I like knew whose dad was and raced against him and I was like I really liked his dad and like I mean I, I looked up to him more than anything 
but he was a good looking dad, so I was like, well, like his kid must be good looking. Yeah, so that's how I met Derek. And then, have you raced against Derek? Yes, but first, like I said, I raced against his dad, and I have never beaten his dad. But, Derek's smiling right now, <laughs> because he knows it's coming. My dad's gonna kill me. He hates when I say this. But, Derek and I have raced against each other multiple times. He's always outqualified me, but I've always passed him on the outside. What's up, Derek? <laughs> so he's never beaten me, and I say it every time to him. That he's I'm going to send me. you a picture that you can put in the video, and you are clearly passing me on the inside. No, I was on the outside. No. Oh, I was on the... That was lacrosse. You can't... They, oh, and the gentle... No, it was that Elko. No, it was? And the gentleman that I am gave you about a half a car length. That's how you race room. everyone. Let's get <laughs> real. <laughs> okay, maybe not all the passes. But I remember a certain pass was on the outside and I had a crush on him. She had one good night at Elko where she had to start in the back and ran to the front. <laughs> so... Wait, not, just listen everyone. So I was passing him on the outside and my spotter said, because it took me two laps. Every time I was passing a car, I could get it in one corner or at least one lap. Two laps go by and I'm still side by side with him. And my spotter goes, gosh, I know you have a crush on, but can you pass him already? And I was like, oh God, I'm getting nervous. I didn't want to wreck him or something. I didn't want him to hate me, but I did pass him. From your trip to Spain, what did you like the most? Well, there's a lot of things that I liked about Spain, and the number one thing was probably meeting the other female drivers that I liked the most. Just they were all so inspirational and like had so many different stories and raced so many different things that I'm not used to because I come from oval racing and stock cars, and they're all road racers. So it was really cool to hear like their side of racing and what they do and the tracks they go to. But the other thing I liked about Spain was actually driving the car. <laughs> like I got to drive two race cars I've never driven before. The Formula 2000 and then the GT4. And I've never driven anything like both of those. So it was pretty awesome to do that. And then it was also on a track in Spain. Like that's so cool. So, um, but the thing I didn't like about Spain was I, it was hard to get used to their food. So I drank a lot of water and ate a lot of bread. And that was about it. I think I lost like 10 pounds after, after Spain because I was like so scared to eat. I didn't want to get sick. But I did end up getting sick anyways. So that didn't work. Okay. I like this question. <laughs> what are the names of your pets? So. Well, I have so many of them. <laughs> Let me start. We'll start with the two that everyone really know. We have two beagles. One is white with a little brown and then one is all the colors. It's brown, black, and white. And so the brown, black, and white one, we got him first out of those two. And his name's Hoosier and my dad named him. My mom got him when we were racing at a track in Plover, Wisconsin. It's called Golden Sands. And my mom thought my dad was gonna kill her. He, she was so scared because we already have so many dogs. But he loved the dog and he's like, I want to name it. So, and we run those tires on super late models. So, sorry to all the other tires I run, but we named our dog Hoosier. And because <laughs> at the time that was the tire. And then the next one we got, the white and brown one, that's also a beagle. His name is Camber slash baby because my mom calls him baby because he is a baby. And he is the biggest beagle I've ever seen. He's huge. My mom feeds, feeds him whatever. <laughs> Derek's mouthing what I should say. Okay. His well, you got so many names for him. His nickname is Oompa Loompa. <laughs> he's a big dog. But he's so cute and so loving. Okay, and then we have a cat. So, the story on the cat was I was racing go-karts and they were for free. My dad told me if I won that race, I would win the championship. I was really young. So, he's like, if you win the championship in the race, you can pick out a cat. So I was like, okay, deal. So I won the race, got the championship, and I was like in the little pen area where all the cats were picking out the cat, and all these carts like went by the grid, and they're all like tag carts, they were really loud, and all the cats freaked out and went and hid somewhere, and my cat's just like sitting there. I was like, oh yeah, dad, I want this one. I think it likes racing. Okay, I was nine. I didn't know much better. 
And then we took it to the vet and they told me my cat was deaf. So I was really sad and I was like, my cat doesn't like racing. But anyways, we named it NASCAR because we thought she liked racing, but it turns out she just can't hear. Okay, wait, we have two more. We have an Italian Greyhound, which my mom again got when we were at a racetrack racing go-karts and um, the go-karts were called Merlin carts. And it was my dad's birthday, so she went to Walmart and this family was giving away these, this Italian Greyhound because they're like, it was a baby, but their dog just had babies and they didn't want the babies. So they're just giving them away. So my mom went to Walmart to get my dad a birthday present and she saw that they're giving away dogs. So she didn't even go in Walmart. She just took the dog and came to the track and my dad told her to bring it back and she couldn't. So that's our Italian Greyhound Merlin. <laughs> oh, and Bear, okay, we have a lab. And so my dad was gone on a snowmobile trip. Gosh, my dad's always gone. That's how my mom gets the dogs. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> my dad was gone on a snowmobile trip and I was really young, like I was probably four and I would sleep in my mom's bed with her when my dad was gone and she just got that dog that day and he was driving through the night from Canada to come home and he gets home really late at night and the dog's sleeping between my mom and I in her big bed, you know, in their room and <laughs> my dad gets into the room and he's like putting his luggage away and like getting into his pajamas and stuff and he like thought the dog moved its head. He thought it was my stuffed animal. And he's like, oh, I'm just delusional. That dog, why is it like following me around the room, <laughs> like turning its head? And then he like got into bed and it like jumped over and ran to him. And he's like, oh my God, it's a real dog. So that's how we got our lab. And his name is Bear. So those are all our animals. I will let you know if we get more, because we probably will. What is your celebrity crush? So I just picked this question right before we did this. I saw it on Facebook. And my celebrity crush, like overall forever and ever, will be Patrick Dempsey um, because he races as well. As he's an actor. So that's why I like him. But ever since I was a little girl watching like Robin Big and Fantasy Factory and Now Ridiculousness, yeah, Rob Deerdeck is will forever be my celebrity crush, I guess, too. So I got two of them. I always thought I was going to marry him, but then he got married and has a family now. And I'm dating Derek, so I guess that won't work. Maybe he's a lot older than me. But yeah, my dreams were crushed when he got married. So there's three more questions. Sorry, this is probably really long. What advice would you give to someone starting their career? So I kind of like just put that question like that because a lot of people were asking me like what advice I would give to their daughter who just started racing carts or you know to some some like guys were asking me like what advice to give to them to start racing but just my advice in general with racing if you're starting out or you're like in the middle of your career or anything is to never give up there's going to be like these awful things that are going to happen and with racing or just any any career in general like it's not just racing you could be like trying to make it to the nfl or nhl or you could try to be like a ballerina or anything a doctor and so many things happen especially like for me and i'm just starting out my career that i realized that like the layout i have planned to make it to the top and how i had it set up it's not going to go exactly how i want it to and things are just going to happen but that's like who makes you so like everything that's happened to me, I'm even though it like hurt at the time and I was upset about it, I'm glad to this day that it's happened because it made me who I am. So you just gotta push through it and believe in yourself. So like if that makes sense, that would be kind of the advice I would give. Um, what's the story behind N29? Okay, I like this question because not a lot of people ask how I got the sponsor. Um, some people do in interviews, but I feel like not a lot of people hear it. And it's really cool and it's I really enjoy telling the story. So N29 um, is out of Madison, Wisconsin. And how we landed that sponsor is kind of crazy. So we were going about trying to race ARCA three years ago. We wanted to run a few races, which we did. Um, but my mom and I were working on sponsorships and finding 
people to talk to and like what teams to go to and we were just trying to figure it out and if we weren't going to race that year we were fine with it and we were going to definitely shoot for the next year which was this year that I did the full season but my mom knew Carl who is M29 and through through my family I, I believe my grandpa is the one who knew him more than anyone in my family so my mom just texted him and said, hey Carl, um, could we like have a meeting and talk to you, like, you know, about racing and sponsorship and like people you know, because we just need help in the direction to go, because you know a lot of contacts and you're a really smart businessman, which he is, so that's what we wanted. We really wanted to talk to him and get his opinion and what to do and how to do it and just get his advice. And he came in that day my mom texted him and we all were sitting down and it was so casual, it was at my dad's racetrack we owned it at the time and we like told them what we were trying to do and you know like what things would cost and like kind of the direction we wanted to go and just ask him like who we should ask and what he thinks about it and he said you know like he like I, he had like his thinking face on it looks like you know and he's like okay yeah like this is awesome like I'll be back next week um, we'll have another meeting that's like kind of all he said. So I was like, okay, cool. Like he's gonna go home and think about it and help like come up with a plan for us to like who to talk to. And he came in that next week and just straight up said he wanted to do it. And I was like shocked. At first I didn't like realize it. Like it just was like, I did not get it at first. And then like later as the meeting was going on and stuff, I was like trying not to cry. I was so excited. Like I didn't want to start crying in the meeting. But that's kind of how we got N29. And then as it went on, you know, it was only three races that he signed for with us. And then we did seven out of that three in the first year and then the full season. And now we're going to go truck racing. How will you build female diversity in the sport? And I picked this as the last question because I feel like it's a really good question. And I think that this should be like asked more often for girls' opinion other than in racing, you know, like in any sport or any career. But how I'm gonna do it is just support other females. Cause that's the only way you're gonna build it is you can't like, you know, put other females down or try to make yourself look better than them or do any of that stuff because that's just gonna hurt them and yourself emotionally, I feel like. But it's just gonna hurt them and put them down when that's not what our goal is. We're trying to build everyone up and make a girl power and you know get more girls in racing or get more girl doctors or whatever it is. So I just feel like we all just really need to support each other and be happy for each other and you know be there for each other. So, and all run well together. Yeah, that's the big thing. Win races, girls, you can do it. <laughs> but, so that's all the questions. That, and I really wanted to end it on that one. So thank you for watching. And I'm sorry this video is really long, but I really wanted to get a lot of questions and really like, not just answer them sim like simple answers. I really wanted to go in and answer them as best as I could. So I'm sorry it's a super long video, but thank you for watching.